this week's app build I wanted to play around with React Navigation because I've heard a lot about it. Especially considering it's the new official thing to do navigation on React Native. It's a simple travel app where you choose where you're going, what kind of climate you're going, whether you're staying in a city or a hotel or whatever. It gives you suggestions for what to pack to go there. To make it a little bit more interesting, we're gonna add some crowdsourcing to it with probably Firebase because we already know how to use that. And I think I'm gonna also do some local storage thing, which I'm not entirely sure yet how to do so that if you close the app and open it again, you don't lose what you've already packed. So. It's essentially a to-do app, but it's a bit more interesting because it gives you suggestions. Okay, I have the basic app built, now let's figure out the rest. Let me show you first how the navigation works, then we're gonna add the actual items for packing and maybe some crowdsource. The basic app works like this. First it asks you where you're going, pick one of them, it gives you further questions on whether you're going to a mountain for and if you click one of those it asks you what kind of accommodations you have the nice thing about using react navigation is that it gives us this kind of stack stuff automatically now the way that's implemented is that our app is a stack navigator with some settings it gets a climate screen that uses climate screen then areas and accommodations and we import all of those from a file called screens which has three different classes that all look pretty much the same. We define the title in navigation options. That's the thing that shows up above our options. Then we have a static property that lets us list all the different options we're gonna have. We have a navigate function that tells us when you, once you click on one of the options, what happens next. So in the case of the climate screens, you then navigate to areas and give it a climate property. And in the render, they all render uh, something called the list screen that gets choices, what is the navigation function, and a, and a Flickr search to help us find the background images. And the way the list screen itself is built is pretty simple as well. We have a React component that's, that's basically a view, goes through all of the choices that we give it, and renders a choice for each of them. Each choice is a, a class that has an onPress function, so what happens when you press on it? In most cases, or basically in all cases, we call the, navi the navigate function with the name of this particular choice. And inside the render, we make a touchable highlight, which gives us this effect when you click on something where it highlights. Inside is a view and then a Flickr pick, which is what renders the Flickr image. I stole that from the music app project and a text that displays the actual text. Now the Flickr pick you've seen in the music app project, if you follow that one, it's an image that loads something from Flickr based on a search term. Now that the basic stuff is working, I'm gonna build uh, some crowdsourcing using Firebase. That's gonna let us crowdsource what kind of stuff you're supposed to pack for all of these different combinations. And I'm gonna build some ability to st save your state locally so that when you're clicking, yes, I already packed this or I already packed that, it's actually saved so you can kill the app and come back later. One hour later. I now added a tab screen where the packing list will go. It looks like this. Okay, my computer is slow, but you have the, the option of choosing toiletries, clothes, or gear. The way I implemented that is by adding a packing list to the original stack navigator. And I've also added paths to all of my stack screens. Not sure yet if this is useful, but apparently it's something you need if you ever want to deep link into the app. So we added the packing list, which is a packing screen that looks like this. It's essentially a tab navigator with a bunch of options. Each entry in the tab navigator gets a screen, which is going to be a packing list. I'm going to expand this to have all of the interactions for adding, adding things to the list, removing them, checking them as done and so on. Each one has a navigation options which specify the tab bar label that shows up down here and an icon that shows up here as well. One hour later. Right, I now have a basic packing list. Let me show you. Click on hotel and it gives you the choice of toothbrush, toothpaste, and if you click on clothes you have jackets and t-shirts and on gear you have laptops, books and phone chargers. There's no memory here yet because there's some state if you don't change the overall view, if you're just changing tabs, the app memorizes that. Now let me show you how this is implemented. At the very bottom here we have 
our previous packing screen stuff except now screen is a function that calls packing list with some default items those default items are defined in a constant later on the idea would be to use firebase or something like that to get a crowdsourced list of items once you have the items you put them in a packing list which uses a a flat list which is a react native component that lets you comp make smart very performant lists the flat list gets some data a function that renders a single item a key extractor which is a function that tells the flat list what to use to compare different items between each other and some content container styling the render item is a lit renders a list item with a toggle item function and then we have a on item toggle function which essentially copies our state and changes one item to have a new flag and then if you look at the actual list item it's a simple view that renders a switch and some text the next thing i have to do is make it so that we're using async storage to actually save this stuff so that this doesn't happen see all gone a few moments later okay i've hacked together an async storage layer so now when you select toothbrush or toothpaste even if you go back it's still selected afterwards so even if you kill the app you can still see that it's going to be selected afterwards if the app loads back right so when the app loads if you go back to tropical mountain hotel you'll see that we already packed the toothbrush and toothpaste and if i click clear packing list it goes away and here's how that's implemented i made a simple store class which it's called a store but it doesn't have anything to do with either redux or mobac in it we have a function called make key this one takes our navigation object from react navigation and turns it into a key and turns it into a key that we can use to identify specific packing lists inside our global async storage then we have get items this one uses promises to get an item from async storage if it was there it returns a parsed value, JSON parse. If it wasn't there, then it creates a new one with our default properties from before. Then we also have save items, which just calls async storage set item with a JSON stringified version of our items list and clears clear items, which is what the clear packing list button is calling. Inside the packing list component, I changed the constructor a little bit. So instead of going through items given in props and adding false values to them, it now has a get items function, which calls get items on our store, then goes through them. And if they don't have a value yet, it adds false and stores them in local state. Then we also have a clear items function which calls store.clearItems with the navigation object so that it can clear the current store or rather so that it can clear, clear the current packing list. And at the very bottom I added a button element that lets us press and call clear items. Now what's left is the ability to add items and the ability to save those items to Firebase so that we get the whole crowdsourcing thing going on. A few moments later. Okay, I added the ability to add and remove packing list items, but it's kind of not styled the best because I'm not a great designer. Let me show you. So you have toothbrush, toothpaste, face wash. And another thing you're going to need in a tropical resort is bug spray. And maybe, what else? Probably going to need a mosquito net of some sort. So that adds the items. And then let's say you're not fancy enough to have face wash and you can remove that. Toggling works the same as before. If you go back and then back again, you'll see that they're both toggled and you can add them to any list. The way I implement that is by adding two methods to our store class. They're all the way at the bottom. We have an add item method. It takes navigation and text, creates a new item with a random ID or rather with a timestamp ID and the text as a name. Then it gets, gets the current items in this packing list adds the item at the end and saves saves back the list. The remove item works the same way, except instead of the adding the item, it's removing it with a filter method. And in the list item component, of which is each row in our packing list, I added a button for removing, which calls a callback for, what's it called? On remove item, which calls store.remove item. And I also created a new 
component called add item which takes care of the addition. Now most of the code in add item deals with managing the text input. We have to make sure that we're detecting ch text changes so that we can update the value. We're handling on submit editing, on focus we remove the placeholder value and all of that. And then the main function is this add item method where we call store.addItem with navigation and text. And when it's done, we call the callback on packing list called on add, which refetches all the items from async storage. And yes, all of that callback stuff would be a lot easier with Redux or Mobex, so maybe I should have used that. One hour later. It worked. The packing lists are now Firebase crowdsourced. Let me show you. Let's say we are in a tropical mountain hotel and we need some clothes. We're obviously gonna need a safari helmet. You know, like those old school Victorian safari helmets. We add it here and it shows up in Firebase as well, safari helmet. And the idea here is that we can toggle them on and off locally and we can remove them locally as well. But when we remove them, we're not removing them from Firebase. So that next time we come back, they come back. Well. Apparently that made them impossible to remove, so I should figure that out. Actually, I'm gonna leave that as an exercise for you. Here's how the Firebase stuff works. It basically all happens in our store. We start by initializing Firebase itself. In the getItems function, we added some logic to load items from Firebase. So all of this async storage stuff here is the same as before. The small addition is that we go through our items and add them from Firebase once we have the Firebase items. But before that, we authenticate to Firebase, sign in anonymously. Then we fetch stuff from Firebase and resolve with the value that was fetched. The other part is that over here where we're adding items, instead of just doing get items, adding an item and then reloading everything, we also add do the Firebase where we authenticate, sign in anonymously, then we get a new reference from a Firebase push, update the item that we just pushed, and then do everything locally. And that's pretty much it. That's how the Firebase integration works. And I hope you've enjoyed this more linear story-based approach to these videos. Let me know in the comments.